All right. Hello, and thank you uh, for stumbling upon my very first video blog. This video will be the first of what I intend to make into a long series of hopefully interesting how-to videos on various techniques that you can use in Excel to impress your friends, coworkers, and a few of your superiors. I personally use Excel every day on the job and would like to share with you some of the skills that I have accrued largely by doing exactly what you're doing right now. And to kick start my uh, Excel vlog, uh, I Excel and so can you, I thought I'd begin with a cool but very simple thermometer goal chart like the one you see here. All right. Uh, in order to explain how to create such a chart, I'm going to have to cover such topics as the random between function, pasting pictures as chart fill, cropping and removing picture backgrounds, selecting, formatting, hard to select or even hidden chart items, using and creating custom data labels, and using the concatenate function. Now while I was clicking over here to add these bullets, uh, you might have noticed that this is a dynamic chart. It is using dynamic data uh, from this table here. Uh, I have two rows, a reached and a goal uh, row. Goal is just randomly set uh, spontaneously at 500, and reached needs to be somewhere less than that, between 0 and that 500. Next to the value, I have the percent that those values represent out of the total, 500, which is why you have 47 and 100 percent here. And then the other interesting aspect of this chart is the data label. I have both the value and the percentage all in one uh, right here. And that is not a default data label. That is one that I uh, created myself. Uh, for this specific chart, and I'm going to show you how to do that eventually, uh, very soon. But let's go ahead and create a thermometer uh, goal chart. All right, the first thing that you're going to have to do to create your thermometer goal chart is have an outline image. You can use Google Images or others such uh, like that, or you can just create one for yourself. Uh, I create this myself. Uh, in whichever way you go, just make sure that it's a fairly basic image and you want a little bit of excess space on the uh, periphery of your object. It just makes this next step a lot easier, which is to select your image, go to Format, Remove Background. This is not an exact science. I'm just going to do my best as quickly as I can to get the air what I want from this. Uh, the purple is what it intends to remove and the not purple is what it will keep and I want to keep uh, the outside for this uh, chart but I want to remove the center just okay right now it thinks that I want to keep everything that's not true I want to remove the center and there we go that's what I want purple inside white and black everything else keep changes now I have my cookie cutter now that I have the cookie cutter I want to reduce that excess area so I'm gonna to go to crop here and using these uh, black reference points. I'm going to reduce it down so it's just skimming the outline of my image, especially the tops and bottom. You want the top and bottom to be just skimming so that the image starts at 0% and ends exactly at 100%, which will only happen if you don't have a bunch of excess space above or below your image, in your image. Okay, now that I'm happy with that, I'm going to click outside of it and now we're done with that. Okay, uh, the next is to get my data. Uh, I'm gonna stick with 500 as my ultimate goal, but uh, to set the value, I don't have a project to give you a specific value, so I'm gonna use the random 
between just for this tutorial I want it to be between zero and my uh, ignore that, uh, ultimate goal of 500 okay 250 that's perfect now I also want to know what 250 is out of that 500 of course, I'm not stupid. I know that's uh, exactly 50%, but does Excel know that? I'm going to put uh, the cell value in H2, my reach value, divided by my goal. And I'm going to lock the goal in place using F4 or by putting a dollar sign in front of both the letter and the number for that cell. Enter. 51. I was It cheated. It changed the number on me. Okay, I'm going to click and drag. Uh, there's a little square, black square in the bottom right corner. I'm going to click and drag it down to the next bottom right cell. And that's going to give me the uh, percent uh, 500 is of itself, which is, of course, 100%. I now have my data. I'm going to select my series, what I want to make into my series labels. And I'm going to select my... Uh, values which I'm gonna say the use the percent because it's easier that way and to avoid getting this I'm using the control button while I click and drag down uh, just so everyone knows uh, I'm going to insert column 2d column clustered column to be exact that's not what I want uh, right now it's treating both of them as the same series right next to each other uh, that's not what I want. I want to switch row and column. Now they're right beside each other. That's not what I want, but at least they're two separate series. Now, what I want is to put them, stack them on over so that they overlap. To do that, I select one of them, format data series, 100% overlap, close. Okay, what happened to reached? Well, Right now I only have goal selected. You can see I have goal and then the percentage here. But I'm, what happened to reach? It is, down arrow, uh, right behind it. And it's uh, about that much. So uh, it's still there, don't worry. But we need to cut a hole in this goal chart or column. So I'm going to select my image, control C, select the uh, column the goal column to be exact, control V, and there I go. I have my very f uh, first uh, Smurf thermometer. Awesome. But I don't want a Smurf thermometer, I want a people thermometer. So that means this area needs to be red. People are red, I guess. Uh, but even though I can see uh, the reach column, I cannot actually click on it because it's still behind the goal column. So I need to hit down arrow again, so I'm uh, selecting the reached uh, column. Going to Format, Shape Fill, Red. And now I have a people's thermometer. Uh, I don't think we need this legend anymore, nor do we need whatever this one's supposed to represent. Awesome. Uh, Hopefully this thermometer, maybe uh, this thermometer can go over 100%, but I'm not hoping for it. So I'm going to set the minimum to zero and the maximum to one, which of course means 100%, equates to 100%. Awesome. Now I'm just about done here. All I need to do is add a uh, the label. Oh, I can't do that because it's still behind. There we go, and uh, layout, uh, inside end, change that to white, so it's a bit clearer. Now I also need, uh, I want the value and the percentage, uh, so I need to use the concatenate function. So I'm going to go equals concatenate, C-O-N catenate. Uh, the value, comma, uh, double quotes, a space, and an open parenthesis, and then another double quotes, my percentage, 
and double quotes, parent, close parenthesis, double quotes, close parenthesis. Uh, that's not what I wanted either. Um, here I have 56%, here I have 0.558. So obviously this is rounding. How can I get my concatenate function to do the same and to treat it as a percent and not as a decimal? Well, I'm going to go to where it's looking at that percentage. I'm going to round it. R-O-U and uh, still that uh, 56 percent comma two decimal places close parenthesis uh, make it an integer by multiplying it times 100 and then lastly I need to make sure that it is actually throwing in that percent symbol that's awesome and finally now how do I get this into here? I select the label, I click on it again, hit equals, don't double click on it, it needs to be uh, time in between. Uh, equals, it's up here. Uh, the cell reference J2, there we go, beautiful. And as you can see, it is dynamic, it's awesome, and that is my first video. Thank you for watching. Uh, just can't wait to post another one.